Hi. Um, so I'm going to give you a DIY talk today. Um, I come from a different space to most of the national um, people representing national agencies here, and that this ar um, archive was developed by myself and a colleague at the University of Canterbury, and started off as a server under the desk, and has sort of grown from there. Um, so for the past eight months, I've been project managing the UC Seismic Digital Archive, which is a federated archive comprising nodes managed by the National Library, the Ministry for Culture and Heritage, Christchurch City Libraries, the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority, New Zealand on Screen, the Canterbury Museum, Te Papa, Archives New Zealand, the Naitahu Research Centre, and of course the University of Canterbury. We're in the final stages of Go Live for two of the key components to the archive. Our home website, which is seismic.org.nz, and the University of Canterbury's node in the Federation, UC Quake Studies. So with that in mind, I haven't got a lot to show you in terms of finished products, but this is perhaps the perfect time to give you an overview of where we're at and where we hope to go. So I want to start with the one question that has guided our project from the outset. What will researchers expect from our archives in 100 years' time when they come to study the recent Canterbury earthquakes? Researchers aiming to study the Napier earthquake have a fairly straightforward task, at least to get started. They go to a museum or perhaps a national library or other national institution. But we live in a technologically enabled age, and the vast majority of content generated from the Canterbury earthquakes is likely to be digital. This image is from the Opti project, which uses trace routes of Class C networks to map the major nodes of the internet. Viewed like this, it's clear that the internet's primary design feature is dispersal, fragmentation. You can put a simple front window in front of this, which might resemble a single point of entry, but Google or Bing or any other search engine company aren't going to ensure the content they surface is safely archived for future generations or that it doesn't get spread across too many nodes to be safely handled, or that, and this is something we're struggling with, companies who have encouraged their users to use their walled gardens are going to make that content available to future generations. And of course, I'm preaching to the converted here. This is the reason for this conference and the reason we're here today. As, ubiqu as ubiquitous as it is, and as robust as Google and other internet service providers might seem at the moment, they simply aren't in the business of preservation. This, combined with the inherent complexity of the internet and the ease with which people can generate digital content, has created a perfect storm for people interested in pres preserving our cultural heritage. And this is especially the case after natural disasters, where you tend to get floods, of digital content produced um, in cyclical fashion. Um, what we've found after the earthquakes in Christchurch is that multiple nodes of digital content have been sprouting up um, and there's been a need to bring them under control. So our solution. First off, I need to say that I'm not a digital archivist, I'm an academic. So when we started thinking about this problem, we thought in very basic terms. The idea was to create a bucket, a server under the desk, where we could start collecting content and provide a service to enable people in Canterbury to put their content into. I've got a doctorate in history and gained what IT skills I have during five years as a technical editor, business analyst and project manager developing IT systems for the financial, energy, health and entertainment industries. This combination of IT experience and the academic humanities led to a natural inter interest in a new field called the digital humanities, which has a tradition reaching back to the 1960s, but only really developed after 2001. After the February quake, Paul Miller, an associate professor from Canterbury, invited me for a beer and asked me what he could do to help. Geoscientists and health academics had clear roles, but what could a professor of English do? I pointed him towards the Centre for History and New Media's 9-11 archive, built after the attacks on the World Trade Centre buildings, which has started small and eventually been archived by the Library of Congress. 
He liked the idea, returned to Canterbury and pitched the idea to his senior managers. To their credit, they jumped on the idea and asked for a budget. A couple of months later, after writing high-level requirements in Wellington, I found myself back at university as New Zealand's first senior lecturer in digital humanities, tasked with building the first project for a new digital humanities program, an earthquake archive. So our goal was initially just to provide a simple archive, modelled on the 9-11 archive that Cantabrians could use to store digital content they thought was worth safeguarding for the long term. There might be a crowdsource component, but we'd keep it fairly basic and have people drop things off to us as much as possible. The idea was to go agile, build something basic but scalable, and get started. Now, things got more complex than that almost immediately, partly because we'd waited until after the September quakes and then the February quakes to start building and designing. After just a little investigation, and a quick email to Jock Phillips at the Ministry of Culture and Heritage to see if he'd be interested in coming on board, it became apparent that many organisations and individuals had the same idea, although normally with a focus in keeping with their own strategic aims. The Ministry for Culture and Heritage were about to launch Quake Stories, that's quakestories.govt.nz, to collect people's stories and images. The National Library and the NDHA were commissioning specific work to document the earthquakes and starting to archive important websites. Christchurch City Libraries had developed a Kite ar archive very soon after the quake started, I believe actually after the September quakes, and were actively collecting content. After a roundtable meeting, it was decided that we try to pull everyone together under a name devised by Paul Miller. Seismic originally stood for Canterbury Earthquakes Stories, Media, Images, Integrated Collection, <laughs> which we stopped saying after a while because it was just too much of a mouthful. The anagram stuck, though, and now we're worried that people are going to start misspelling seismic, which wouldn't look good on us as educators, but nevertheless. The consortium has grown to 10 members. It's led by the University of Canterbury Digital Humanities Program and includes a variety of national agencies. The idea is straightforward enough. We'll create a, what I call a front window that people can visit to learn about the project and search content in any of our archives. And we've built a metadata aggregation service to enable this. I'm glad that Sean was up before me because um, he's given me some, um, um, he's, he's He's impressed upon me the reason why this project's been a success thus far, and I think it's partly because we've focused on the creation of a healthy ecosystem, and I've used that word a lot, that could grow organically over time. Although users would need some kind of brand identity and a single place or a single point of entry to focus on, in reality, they can access quite content from any of the different nodes in the Federation. And this is common enough, of course. Standard Archive Federation is practiced around the world in industry as well as the cultural heritage sector. What was important for us was to emphasize that UC Seismic isn't about hoovering up content for its own good, for the good of the, of the project. The ecosystem model implies cooperation, collaboration, and sharing. From day one, a critical success, success factor for us has been that every node in the Federation benefits from being a part of the whole. If we're a success, traffic will be spread proportionally across all the nodes, and the bigger nodes will um, drive traffic to the smaller nodes. But we also have the opportunity to act as a clearinghouse for content. New Zealand has limited digital resources, and it's important our national agencies work together to avoid duplication and that people wanting to contribute their content for future generations have a sense that we're working together for their benefit. It's especially important that smaller nodes that sprouted soon after the earthquakes, and I'm talking here like um, about WordPress sites like whenmyhomeshook.co.nz, 
It's important that smaller sites like these are brought into the fold and can benefit from being part of the broader ecosystem. So yes, in case you're wondering, we're aggregating content from sites outside the consortium too. Seismic.org.nz is going to surface content from a wide variety of content providers. The key though is to create a healthy, open and collaborative archive of federated content. These are the values that are core to the digital humanities and they've served us very well thus far. So you're wonder, probably wondering how this all hangs together. It's all well and good saying we've, we'll build a federated archive, but what about standards and metadata? How are we going to glue these 10 nodes and counting together? If the idea was simple, the implement, implementation of it could have been a nightmare and initially we were on our own. The idea was to use a new University of Canterbury node as an aggregation point. We'd ingest URLs, improve the metadata where possible, and then provide an API to run the federated search. The ontology we chose for the University of Canterbury node will be the one underpinning the federated search in this model, making it important that we get it right. And I spend a good amount of time discussing how we go about this with the principal architect of Quake, Quake Studies, Jason Darwin from CWA Media. Jason got me to look at a bunch of different schemas, coins, mets, friend of a friend, etc. The idea being that we'd either use an existing one or cobble something together that suited our particular purposes, which were wide ranging. I mean, what kind of ontology do you need for a Quake-related archive? The basic Dublin core style of elements would obviously be needed, but also geolocation and event-based fields and so on. I was also keen to try and capture social media through friend of a friend and generally ensure the final ontology was RDF friendly and capable of being leveraged in the linked data world. So after a bit of back and forth, I left it to Jason and he came back with one based almost solely on Dublin core and digital New Zealand. We've made a few additions along the way, but our ontology is underpinned by these two basic schemas. And I think it makes sense. This is a New Zealand event and our content above all needed to fit well with digital New Zealand. And with that decision made, things fell into place pretty easily. We now had an ontology we could pass around to interested people and a conversation started with digital New Zealand. And lo and behold, we decided to use their service for metadata aggregation instead of doing it ourselves, which is a no brainer really. While there's an argument for encouraging new aggregation sites to pop up alongside Digital New Zealand, and Digital New Zealand make this argument themselves, it would have given the university far greater, and it would have given the university far greater control over how the aggregated metadata was used. It felt to me like we'd only be reinventing the wheel, creating a bunch of technical headaches for ourselves, and wasting what is a fantastic service. So now, UC Seismic Federated Search is powered by Digital New Zealand. It was the final piece of a rather large jigsaw puzzle for me and I'm just um, over the moon to have them on board. As well as managing the main consortium members content, the Digital New Zealand team also work with new providers, large or small, to aggregate their content and make it available through either seismic.org.nz or Digital New Zealand itself. So effectively, Digital New Zealand is the upstream aggregator and you can find all of the content for UC Seismic um, search in Digital New Zealand as well. So my to-do list. It all sounded easy, but it's fair to say that the project has gone something like this. First, develop an agreement across the inter interested agencies to play nicely together, share content, and support the university team and our endeavors. Develop a project governance framework that could manage development and communications. Architect a federated archive that could integrate existing legacy nodes and facilitate the aggregation of metadata and identify gaps in our national digital infrastructure, find nodes that are needed but don't exist, and build them. And for me, this reduced to a fairly simple to-do list. First, I had to build a front window to the Federated Archive and implement Federated Search. This work has been done by Envy Interactive with metadata aggregation services, as I've said, provided by Digital New Zealand. And the second thing I needed to do 
was to build a new University of Canterbury node to be part of the Federation. It was clear from the outset that although a number of nodes had either sprouted from nowhere or developed as part of existing infrastructure, we weren't served very well, I mean New Zealand here, or at all, in terms of a research-focused repository. So we decided to build one called UC Quake Studies, which is going to be the sister repository to the Ministry for Culture and Heritage's Quake Stories site. Seismic.org.nz went live last year. And to their credit, um, there was general agreement across all the people in the project, all the organisations in the project that users needed some, some kind of clear information architecture to guide them around the site. So a decision was made to focus it on two central nodes, being Quake Stories and Quake Studies. Quake Stories is the Ministry for Culture and Heritage site for crowdsourcing Quake-related text and images. They got it up and running fairly quickly and it now has several hundred very high quality stories and images. The rest of this site provides general information about the project and a call to action that encourages people to visit various sites in the Federation to deposit material. The next big milestone is the implementation of Federated Search, um, which could almost be plugged in tomorrow, but will um, probably be the end of April. The expectation is that as agencies increase their quake-related holdings and new nodes built by individuals and community groups get brought into the fold, the search results on seismic.org.nz will get richer and richer. This site will just have one search box, Google style, on the front page um, that will produce the results. Now, of course, our approach doesn't entirely deal with the issue of pre preservation, of course. We're very much um, short to medium term but because the core nodes in the Federation of Government Agencies and the NDHA and Archives New Zealand are a key part of the conversation, we feel we've done a pretty good job given the broader context of disaster recovery and ongoing earthquakes down south. And um, we're actually already finding overseas agencies are interested in our approach, um, the broader model, and are keen to prepare similar systems in advance for their own countries. And I think, um, it's a, it's a model that benefits from a nice balance of idealism and pragmatism. You see Quake Studies. Um, Quake Studies is really the, I think, 80% of the workload in this project. Seismic.org.nz is a thin website um, that's going to have a search widget on the front page powered by Digital New Zealand. You see Quake Studies is um, a fully featured um, um, digital archive with Fedora Commons at the back end and a Drupal thin client. It's almost ready for unveiling. We're going to have a closed launch um, with a curtain um, at the end of April and then we'll go to a beta launch um, and a full launch later on, probably around August. And the general spirit of division across the seismic um, consortium we won't be doing any crowdsourcing. We're focusing on ingesting content that has either been produced by research teams, students, or individuals, community groups, and local and central government agencies that would like to get their content to be preserved in an academic setting. Um, so for instance, Fairfax Media has pleased to give us all their Quake-related content, published and unpublished, and a lot of the reason um, they're happy for that to go to us is because it'll be only used for research and teaching purposes. There are a few um, um, copyright issues with what we're ingesting, but the, the research and teaching focus um, gets around a lot of them. So the aim is to create a large data set that can underpin the university's earthquake research activities and build an international profile in disaster research management and recovery. The University of Canterbury currently has, I believe, 187 earthquake-related research projects, many of which will be producing digital output that will store in quake studies. And to the enduring credit of our consortium partners, um, the support has just been humbling, actually, a good deal of seismic.org.nz is directed towards the governance and future funding of quake studies. 
As most people know, the university has taken an enormous financial hit from the earthquakes, and UC Quake Studies is seen as an excellent way for us to rebuild our research profile around what we have come to be known best for, earthquakes. As I've mentioned, the archive's been built by CWA Media, and for those of you with a Tiki Bend ES, we're using Fedora Commons back end with a Drupal front end connected via a Drupal Fedora Commons module. Fairly straightforward, but um, the, getting the, the wiring between those two elements sorted out has taken a bit of thought. Current state. Um, I keep saying that we're at day zero. We're over a year past the big February shake, but our archive is really um, still at day zero. Seismic.org.nz is live and federated search is ready to be added. Um, if you go to Digital New Zealand at the moment and search for seismic, you'll see the seismic collection. Um, last time I looked, it had just over 2,500 items from, I think, five content providers. That list um, could grow to up to 40 or 50 content providers, so you can imagine that over, over time that collection is going to grow significantly. Um, and Quake Studies is nearly ready for launch. We've signed Deeds of Gift with Fairfax Media, Environment Canterbury, and Historic Places Trust, and these will be the three go-live collections. And what I haven't mentioned yet is that we also have a physical presence um, for the project. We're about to deploy a mobile recording studio to record high-definition video interviews. We've already started on those interviews and have eight interns working in a project office on campus that will be the operational hub um, for the archive. So effectively in these eight months, we haven't just had to build the system, we've had to build um, the governance and the operational framework and the legal framework that the system is going to operate within. Um, and one of the um, emphases of the project is to wrap this archive into the student teaching and learning process um, so our students will work with us in the project office, go out to content providers to um, define their requirements, package up their content, bring it back to the project office, upload it um, into Quake Studies, and then perhaps write an essay on what they've done. Um, they're involved in, the students are involved in content curation and metadata improvement. One of the things we'd, we want to do for some of the smaller nodes in the Federation is to send, give them our students to work on site with them to improve their metadata so that that can be fed back into the broader ecosystem. And all of this is quite breathtaking when I realise we've achieved it in less than a year. Um, but as the saying goes, content is king. We're going to be going live at the end of April with a federated archive with, compared to Google, very little in it, um, and a um, digital archive with three main content collections, possibly adding up to about a terabyte, with another 20 terabytes ready to be ingested. Um, but again, the real proof of the project will be in the amount of digital content we can preserve before it disappears into some forgotten corner of the internet or into the ether altogether. This is the reason we built this bucket in the first place, because we had lots of people coming to us and saying, what's going to happen in 50 years? All these photos, that I've, got, I've got a thousand photos, what do I do with them? Um, so the general feeling seems to be that we've done a good job, but in many ways the hard work is just beginning. <laughs> 